Hello everyone and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. Today we have the Dell Dimension 4550 computer from our Battle of the OEMs video we just released. And it's the video right here. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you go look at it. It's quite a good video. And so one of the things I had continued to mention about this computer on that video is how dirty the system was. And I nicknamed it Dell El Stinko because it is quite a smelly computer. So, you know, it's full of dirt and grime and dust cosmetically, but definitely, <laughs> definitely a candidate for getting it all externally cleaned. But also the insides are dirty as well. So we're going to, have to do a full cleaning on the on the system. But on top of that, we also have some functional things to deal with. So for example, we have a DVD drive up top and there's another DVD drive that we discovered hidden in behind here that's not even screwed in or connected to anything. So we're gonna remove those two, potentially put in a proper DVD burner just so we can get that cleaned up and that sorted out. The other thing that we'll do in today's video is get a hard drive installed because we don't have one currently installed in this machine. And we also will get an operating system installed. And remember, the scope of today's video is simply just to get this system cleaned up, scrubbed down, get it all looking good and feeling good, and get the hard drive installed and get our, an operating system installed. And we'll go from there. Yes, there's different operating systems I can install. Yes, I can bring this to some sort of working uh, suggestion for, you know, today using a Linux distro or what have you, not doing any of that today. Our goal is just to restore the system back to its glory and really just set the stage for what we could potentially do to it next. So you know what? We have lots to do. Let's get right to it. Okay, and here we are. We have the system all set up on the bench. Yeah, we're all ready to go here. There's lots of nooks and crannies in this computer that we're gonna have to use different types of cleaning methodologies here. I mean, what we're gonna do first is just kind of give it a general wipe down. And for that, I just have some isopropyl alcohol in a uh, kind of a mist type spray bottle. And the whole idea here is just to see what we can get off in terms of just the initial surface dirt. And then, so we'll do that. Let's give it a good little kind of wipe down here. And, you know, the whole idea here is just by giving this general wipe, we'll start to see what's going to require a little more elbow grease. For example, all this dirt that was just right there just came off and I was expecting to have to use a microfiber cloth of some sort. So we're good on that so far. And I mean, generally, you know, most of the computers that I get here, uh, I mean, already the system already looks better, but most of the systems I get here, you know, tend to be damaged or scratched or whatever. And, uh, you know, as long as we can get the cosmetic stuff out, the rest is uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. Now here for, you know, this area here with, um, it seems to be a little dirt under the Dell logo. I just kind of take a, you know, a cotton swab here to get around, you can see the difference here. And that cotton swab will allow me to get in kind of the, you know, the bad areas here for, you know, getting the dirt out of there. And, you know, I can see additional dirt down inside here. Now I have already attempted to pop this off and unfortunately it does not come off easily. So I'm not going to worry about that too, too much. I'm just trying to get that. You can see that dirt is over there now. That's all I needed to do. And yeah, it's quite the, satisfying process when you're going through this at least i found you know let me know down in the comments if this is something that you do to your systems or have done in the systems in the past but i think this is all important as part of a restoration to do what is required to get the computer kind of where it needs to be in terms of uh, cleaning yeah i just like to get it all scrubbed up and get it all good to go here Okay, what we're going to do now is we'll continue to do this on the external side and continue rolling we're just going to jump cut through all this footage and uh, yeah, get to our next part.
Okay, so we have most of the cosmetic stuff on the outside done. And, you know, having to use the magic eraser in some places, having to get some of those buff marks out. Definitely a lot of elbow grease that goes into doing this. It's worth doing as you're doing it because, like I said, the computer's coming up nicely, uh, nice and clean now. So the next step, because this is a clamshell case, we're going to crack that open and start looking at the inside and do a general cleaning of the inside now. We'll take the cards out, we'll scrub them out and, you know, all that. And uh, yeah, let's go uh, right to it. Okay, so we have most of the insides removed now where we have the drives removed, we have all the cabling removed that's gonna be coming out of the computer. Uh, the power supply is right there. And I took the housing off here, the uh, ventilation housing off of the CPU where the ventilation goes. And so yeah, we're just gonna go through all this, scrub all the board off, get all cleaned up, do a nice little uh, brush all around and get the system looking fantastic. So here we go. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is take off the CPU cooler. There we are, or I should say the heatsink. And I don't know about you, but it looks pretty dry. I don't think there's any thermal paste on there whatsoever. And if there was, it kind of leaked out and gooed out of the system. Yeah, that's unfortunate uh, for sure. Hopefully there's, uh, I mean, the system did power up and we did have posts. So I'm hoping that, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't see if this is a pad of any sort. It needs some thermal paste for sure. So I'll get that put on. Let's continue cleaning on. Okay, so I have the majority of the work done in terms of getting all the major dust and dirt out of this. And my goodness, this is just jam-packed of filth. <laughs> so we're going to continue on here, but I'm going to wipe down everything inside. So if anyone's asking what I'm using here in terms of a brush, you see I'm doing all of that. These are ESD brushes, so they do not develop any sort of... Um, any sort of electronic uh, static uh, discharge, they, they're not able to generate any sort of uh, charge. Yeah, I'm not risk of damaging any components. Same with the vacuum tip is grounded. So we want to make sure that that's all good. So we're going to continue on here. We'll wipe everything down, get everything kind of cleaned up. We'll spray along. You'll see everything along the the way here. But uh, yeah, definitely excited. And it's neat, neat to see up here at the top. We actually have a date stamped in here. It was inspected November uh, 23rd of 2002. So that's pretty cool. Okay, lots more work to do. Let's keep on going. As you can see, we were able to take the motherboard out of the system, courtesy of the latching system that the system has. And yeah, I mean, we're going to get this all cleaned up. I mean, we have the main case itself all kind of situated there. So there's not much dirt on the inside of this or underneath that uh, motherboard plate that holds it in place here. So, I mean, there's not much more to do here on this. So we're going to keep on, I'm going to vacuum off this, get some of this dust out of there around this corner I couldn't get. And uh, yeah, we'll put the motherboard back in. Here we go. Okay, so I think we're in a good place now where the actual case is clean. We have all the dust bunnies out of there. We have all the dirt out of there and all that good stuff. So I'm just going to close the 
clamshell here as is. I'm not going to do anything with the system at the moment just because we have a lot of cleaning to do the external peripherals. So we're going to focus a little more time on that now. So I'm just going to close this off just a little bit. That way it's kind of just put aside for us and then we'll just move on from there. Okay, here we are with some components on the bench and we're going to get this all kind of cleaned up here. So this is the video card. This is the GeForce 4 video card and you can see it's quite dirty here. So to get these clean, I mean, there's a couple different ways. First thing I'm going to do is use an ESD brush just to kind of brush off all the, the thicker grime off of the uh, PCB itself. Yeah, it's just caked here. Even that's the joys of it being up like this in the in the system. Yeah, so I mean, it's pretty straightforward here. There's nothing you need to worry about when it comes to the components in these brushes. They're really, really, really good. And they don't cause any damage to the PCB itself. So I like to get the thick off of that way. You can see a big dirt pile kind of forming here. We'll do the same thing with the heat sink. We're just going to take this off. I'm not looking at um, taking this off and applying any more uh, grease or anything like that. We're just looking at getting the card all cleaned up. It's, uh, it's working just fine, so we'll continue on that path. And we'll get all the nooks and crannies here all kind of cleaned off. And you can see that the, the dust bunnies are just absolutely falling off of this card. Okay, we have that there. What we're going to do on the back side of it, I'm just going to spray it with some isopropyl alcohol just to kind of give it that little bit of a bath there, just to kind of clean off the edges. And we'll do the same thing here. We'll scrub along. And, uh, you know, this is the toothbrush is safe to use here on this. This is what I also use for removing when I'm soldering and stuff like that, you know, flux or any sort of acidic acid if I'm trying to neutralize some battery leakage. So this is something that, uh, yeah, you just, uh, it's safe to use. Okay, so I have that on there and you can see it dissipates fairly quickly and it's just good to get the dirt off of that. And you can see the card is looking just absolutely great now compared to what it was. There we are. And yeah, that's all we do. So I'm going to keep on going here and clean all the components. And the same thing is going to apply to the cables and all the other components that we have. I mean, we have the heat sink here. We have some other stuff that we need to get kind of scrubbed down. I know I had mentioned earlier about replacing the drive because I thought it was just a DVD-ROM drive, but it's actually a CDRW drive and a DVD-ROM uh, drive. It's a combo drive, so I'm going to leave it in the system. I'm just going to clean it all up and get it all kind of uh, looking good there, and yeah, we'll end up using that same drive again. I'm okay with that just because it is aero-specific to the system. So there we go. We have one clean graphics card, and we're going to continue on the rest right now. We now have the components all clean. So I think the next step is to get the CPU reinstalled, or not the CPU, I should say the cooling system installed back in the computer, get that all situated and start installing all the components back in the clamshell case. And here we are all back on the bench to start putting back together the heatsink and the cooling system. But first I'm gonna put on some of the MX4 thermal compound just because I uh, don't like the fact there was none on there, and I just like to spread out just a little bit here. Nothing major. That's more than enough it needs, and considering it had none to begin with, that's, uh, yeah, let's just keep on going here. So we have the CPU cooler here. Let's make sure I can put it back in the right way. That would be helpful. And there's not much to that there, eh? It's just literally just a little lever that holds that down in place there, the uh, heat sink, and that's all it needs. And don't worry, I remembered to hook up the uh, four pin this time. <laughs> Anybody who saw one of my previous videos knows I did not always do that. Just so embarrassing. Okay, let's continue on here. Let's get the fan installed. There's a little latching system that snaps on here. So it just goes to the back like so, and it goes down. Our little clip, so we're good. I love that little design so you can actually clean inside here as needed. That's good. Let's hook up the fan power. Can't forget that. I've already forgotten enough of these things before. We don't need that being forgotten. So we have a little four pin, or sorry, three pin, I should say. Here we go. We have that installed now. And we should hook up the power as well. The ATX power we now have connected. So we now know we have all the power connected to the board. So there's still this little um, proprietary front panel type I.O. 
uh, connector here. So we're going to pop that on there. Nothing major for that. That just goes on like that. That's for USB. It says right there, USB 2, right on it. Okay, we have that connected now. Okay, and next thing I'm going to do is install the memory. So we have two 512 gig, 12 gig, two 512 meg sticks of memory. And regardless of the fact that I've cleaned the system and all that, I'm still going to use some uh, contact cleaner here that I just put in the slot. And that's all we need. There's a little dust bunny still left in there, but we pulled that guy out of there. And we'll just nicely put these in like that. And it makes it that much easier when you have the right tools in place to do this. And I just love restoring old systems and getting them kind of all up and running again because I'm like the, you know, it's just better to work in. And already the smell of this system has really gone away. It's crazy how much dirt and grime was in this computer. And I can only imagine the thermal properties of that happening, preventing it from cooling. Now we have our DVD, CD, CDRW, I should say, combo drive. So it's a CDRW DVD drive. So we're going to use that. Uh, like I had mentioned, we're going to continue on with that. And we remove the other one. We don't need the other one installed there. So let's do that. There we go. We have that in there. And we may as well plug the power into that while we are here. And I'm going to get a hard drive for this as well. And I'm hoping I can get the hard drive mounted here. Now, somebody made a comment that they're too long for this area to be able to hook up a, a three and a half inch drive. So I may end up having to use the extra bay here uh, for now until I can get something to work on that. So let me get that drive out there now. Okay, so I have jury rigged something up on the system. So we have a three and a half to five and a quarter inch adapter here. And I used the two spare arms that had come with the system that were still up on the uh, top of the cage itself. Uh, the case so, and i'm going to just slide that right in there and this allows us to have the three and a half inch drive connected secured right within the system which is exactly what i wanted to do so i'm going to continue on getting this all connected up now that we have that in there and there's no worries i need to actually prepare it for being a primary drive i did not do that yet so i'm going to put that jumper on there right away so let's get the power connected to these guys all nice and easy uh, one Molex up here. What I'll do just for to keep the kind of cables in the same area, I'm going to connect the floppy power here, but also I'm going to utilize this Molex because in that way it kind of keeps everything tight up here instead of just using the two that are on the same uh, cable there. There we go. Okay. So we have that all in there, all nicely connected. So the primary IDE is going to be connected to the hard disk. And then we will do, or what we'll do is connect the um, secondary IDE to the floppy drive. And this is a 250 gig uh, Western Digital, I believe it is, uh, hard drive that we're putting in here. Uh, Windows XP should handle that, no problem. And we have that in, and we'll put in the secondary IDE here. Get that plugged in here. And these are both cables that were already in the system. So I presume we'll leave it. They'll work. So we don't have any drive issues. There we go. We have that on there. And then we'll hook up the floppy cable as well. So the standard cable without the twist in it goes to your motherboard. We'll pop that on there. And then we'll do the same thing here. We'll connect that to the back of the floppy drive. And we'll make sure that's in the right position. There we are. All right, I'm gonna put in our GeForce 4 card now. We'll pop that in right away. Nothing too hard about that. We'll slide it in the slot here. And there we are. And so much better to be working in the system. It's so much cleaner. And then we'll put our FireWire card again. Never use FireWire. No idea why I need it now, but anyway, <laughs> we'll pop it in here anyway. Uh, so we have that in the system like that. And then we'll put our A open sound card here as well. The open AS9400, which is model, as we talked about in the last video, AW840. So we're gonna pop that in here as well. I'm keeping them spaced exactly the way they were when I first took the system apart, just to have. And there's a little latching system just kind of clips down there and holds the cards in, which I think is ingenious. I think it's great to have the toolless design there. We have a much cleaner system now. I mean, ideally, 
I took a, quite a bit of elbow grease to get that kind of all cleaned up there. Just removing the little bit of dust I did not remove after I removed those green connectors there um, from this holding area here. I guess that's where they had spares, right? So kudos to Dell for thinking ahead on that. That's awesome. So I think we have everything connected again. I think we have everything clean like we want it to be. I'm telling you the odor is immensely less than this now. Close that all up and we will get the bench all set up, all ready to go and see if we can get the system fired up. Let's get that done now. Okay, and here we are all set back up on the bench, all excited with this awesome, clean Dell Dimension 4550, no longer Dell El Stinko. <laughs> this system is just spotless. I love it, it's clean. Now, I don't know if you notice the difference, but the DVD-ROM drive, CD burner, CDRW has been changed out. And I'll tell you what happened. So I went to, uh, well, as Dell does, as soon as you plug the power in, in this particular system anyway, it tries to post. The minute you plug the power in, it, it doesn't give you an option. So when it did, it just wasn't working. And I heard the drive making this weird grinding noise. And that was this one here. And so I just said, okay, well, I'll try it out. And it wouldn't work. I couldn't push the button. It was lighting up. And then I used a pin. I used the emergency eject, and it came out. And then I was able to get it in and out. But regardless of me doing that, it just would not work. There was nothing I could do to get this drive to pick up by the system. So then, you know, that second drive that was kind of just hanging out in there for whatever reason, it's an identical drive. So I went ahead and went, okay, I'm going to try that. And it won't even power up. It just doesn't work at all. So I have no idea what's going on with that. So I went, all right, fine, whatever. So I went in my tickle trunk again and found that drive. So it's a DVD-ROM drive again. The only difference is, is it has white lettering or gray lettering or whatever instead of just the black stuff. And then here it says the compact disc rewritable. So it's the exact drive. This one says ultra speed. So it's probably a newer model than what these are. But again, just have that in the system. The second thing I did, because uh, I had forgotten, and when I was in there playing around, I replaced the coin cell battery. Just letting everybody know, I did do that. So any settings that we make or changes that we make will actually stay now. Okay, let's power this up and see where we are in terms of the setup. Just looks really awesome. So clean. There's our beautiful Dell splash screen, Dell Dimension 4550 series. And it's going to come up and complain probably about booting. There we are. Comes up right away. Awesome. Hit F2 for setup utility. And if you noticed, I am using my Dell keyboard and my Dell mouse. I had to because uh, it's a Dell system. Okay, so here we are with Pentium 4 processor running at 2.4 gigahertz. Nice and cool, may I add, because of the thermal paste that I put in there. So we're going to change the system time and, you know, all that because it is not anywhere near this. So we're going to change all that out. That's perfect. And then so our primary drive is our hard drive, and that's our 20, 250 gig. There we are. Uh, Western Digital, which I had mentioned earlier. So that's set to auto and then CD-ROM reader. That's what we have. Just it's a TAC DW552GA. So it's detecting that no problem. That's wonderful. And then our secondary drive is off and our, our secondary drive one is off as well. Okay, so memory information. We still have our one gigabyte of RAM and that's two 512s that we saw earlier. And for the record, I didn't have to do anything differently. I just cleaned the memory and sprayed the slots and put them in and boom, they worked right away. Okay, that's great. And then the CPU information, there we go. I mean, we still have the 2.4 gigahertz, which is clearly aligned up top. Integrated devices. Let's see what we have here. We have the network controller on, mouse port, USB emulation on, serial ports on. Parallel port is just our typical type of setup. Primary video controller is the AGP, which we have installed. And that's great. And UDMA is on. I don't think that there's anything that we need to worry about now outside of just installing an operating system. We're going to save changes and exit so that that way it just saves what we did. I'm going to go back into the uh, BIOS settings just to make sure that our clock is staying the same and then that battery is working just fine. And yeah, I mean, we should be good to go. As hit, as see, it's trying to access the drive, so that's good. Uh, hit F2 for setup utility again. It should show today's date, which is August 24th. And it is, and it's showing the right time. That's amazing. Okay, now for an operating system. I, again, sat back on this and thought about it for a little bit. 
I am going to install Windows XP Professional on this because that's what was originally in this system. And I'm doing that just for the sake of setting this up for old sort of uh, gaming of the era. And because uh, I may upgrade the video card in this, potentially add a little more memory to the system, maybe two gigabytes of memory. But again, I just want to set the stage here. This computer was ready to be tossed. And now it's sitting here on the bench, completely cleaned, completely fixed up. There's a new hard disk installed. I'd love to see Windows XP running on this machine. So let's get Windows XP installed. Okay, so we have our Windows XP disk in the drive. Let's exit setup and see if we can go into the Windows XP installation. Okay, set up Windows now, press enter, absolutely. And yes, we read the agreement, all that good stuff. So there's our drive detecting no problem. We're gonna format the drive using NTFS quick. It's partition one, new uh, partition here, raw space, so that's good. So it's in the process of formatting the drive for us, done. Now it's expanding the information from the disk. So here we go. Okay, so we have a desktop with Windows XP Professional Service Pack 3 installed. Let's take a quick peek at what it installed in terms of hardware. Before we jump in, let's verify that we have Windows XP Professional Service Pack 3 registered to the Retro Recall. Intel Pentium 4, 2.4 gigahertz, running one gigabyte of memory. Let's go to hardware, device manager, and see what sort of things we got to deal with here. So. Ah, it automatically detected the GeForce 4 MX420, which is awesome. Okay, just restarting here after installing the a Open AW840 sound card drivers. I was able to fortunately get the drivers off of archive.org, so very excited about that. Okay, we're back to the desktop, and I'm not hearing any sound, actually. Let me just readjust the... Uh, resolution here just because of the recording there we are well a little easier for everyone to see this way and I installed the audio c media mixer but it, i don't think it installed the actual drivers required let's take a peek here and see what happened well it installed the sound in, yeah installed all the sound no problem let me take a peek at that. Okay, so I have the sound all installed now. It seems that it takes over the Windows sound sort of controls with the C Media Sound multi-channel, all this stuff. This is really cool. <laughs> Now that we know the sound works, let's just jump into control panel real quickly here and take a look at the device manager. So we have everything installed that we need. Let's just quickly go through this just so we can see all the beautiful drivers and everything installed on this awesome Dell Dimension 4550. So under disk drives, we have the Western Digital 2500 JB. So this one is the 250 gigabyte hard drive that I have installed. And again, it's spinning rust. It's a hard drive. It's a physical hard drive. Everybody knows how much I like that. So we're going to continue doing that as long as I have drives. Display adapters, we saw that earlier in the video. So we have the NVIDIA GeForce 4 MX420 installed. And our DVD CD-ROM drives, we have the TAC DW552GA. That's the DVD CDRW drive that we had to install earlier because the other two drives were not functional. Standard disk controllers are fine. We have the interface here just fine. And our network adapter is our Intel Pro 10100. So it's just a 100, um, 100 network card. Our processor is the Intel Pentium 4 CPU 2.4 gigahertz, which we know. And then we install that amazing, awesome, loving it so far <laughs> the sound uh, aw840 by a open it's the cobra uh, sound card so we have that installed so that's really really good now that's all worked out i think it's time to test out a game or two you know listen uh, test out the video card test out the sound and test out the performance of this computer let's go into it now <coughs>
And here we are with our fully restored Dell Dimension 4550 tower. Saved from e-waste, fully restored, lots of elbow grease, lots of scrubbing, getting it all dirty, getting all clean, and getting it all up and running. And, you know, I just love doing this for everybody. I love doing this myself. Love seeing these systems come back to life. And, again, to consider this was going to be scrapped and completely thrown away, and here we are bringing brand new life into this system. I mean going from what it was, testing it all the way to do a fully clean, replacing the DVD-ROM drive, replacing the hard drive, or actually adding a hard disk to the system. Now, it's running Pentium 4, 2.4 gigahertz with 1 gigs of RAM. In terms of performance, it runs pretty great for what it is, and that's the whole idea of this. You know, in terms of the actual gaming itself with that GeForce 4 card, I mean, we ran Quake 3 Arena, no problem. Actually, I would say it ran very well. And the Unreal Tournament 2004, you know, I had both turned up fairly high, actually the highest. Unreal Tournament kind of struggled a little bit here and there, but that's okay. I wouldn't push the system any further than that, you know, without a video card upgrade. Very impressed with the sound card that's in this computer for what it is. May open uh, sound card. So yeah, very excited uh, to have this in the collection as well. And very happy to have done this on the channel for everybody. That said, if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. 67% of the views on this channel are from people who are not subscribed to the channel. So if you subscribe, it really helps me out. Hit that notification button, change it to all. You'll be notified of new content such as this. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know your experiences with the Dell Dimension lines. Did you have a 4550? You know, what sort of recommendations do you have for the system at this stage? I brought it to a certain point. I'd like to hear what you think about it going forward. And again, love the comments, love the interaction. I reply to every one of them. Always making new content. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to all my supporters. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.